Hello and welcome to the second video from the third module of this course on labor and decent work in supply chains. In the last video, we took a closer look at employment relations in two supply chains, those for garments and for sugar. We understood that the great disparity in power between employers and employees in the agricultural production of cotton and sugarcane reflected and exacerbated inequality in Indian society. Agricultural workers were employed seasonally and informally, were not organized into unions, and were only protected by the most basic labor laws. We also observed that higher up the value chain, in the manufacture of garments and the processing of sugar, a large number of workers were employed under non-standard conditions, and that some workers were particularly vulnerable because of their age, gender, caste, and history of migration. In this video, we will look at some specific aspects of work in these supply chains. We will learn about wages, working hours and other conditions of work, occupational safety and health, social security, and some issues faced specifically by women workers. As with the last video, we will learn from the experts who have worked closely with the workers employed in these supply chains. Many of the issues faced by workers in the agricultural production of cotton and sugarcane are so specific that they have to be considered separately from the broader supply chains for garments and sugar. We begin with the issue of wages in the agricultural production of cotton and sugarcane. Uh, uh, you know, so as I said, I think when, when we think about the working conditions, obviously the primary parameter is wage and as I said, the wage, uh, you know, there hasn't been any kind of... Uh, 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 you know, uh, a proper regulation of wage. Often the governments uh, declare a certain minimum wage uh, as part of the minimum wage policy of the government and it's a state subject. Various state governments declare these policies. But the ability to enforce the, the declared minimum wage across you know, the various remotely located villages in the country is minimal. And because agricultural work does not involve any kind of written contract, any kind of payment records of uh, of the transaction between the 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 the, the landed farmer and the landless agricultural laborer. Uh, it is it often becomes extremely difficult to uh, to make any record keeping of the violation of this minimum wage act, and hence, and as I said, the the negotiation. Uh, the bargaining power of these laborers is, is fairly minimal because they are much larger in number and there are few uh, landed farmers who can offer this kind of large employment scale. So often uh, these laborers are working at much, much below the mandated uh, you know, minimum wage. Uh, you know, to, to just to give an example, uh, in a state like Assam or Orissa, the minimum wage declared by the government often is in excess of uh, you know about 250 300 rupees per day uh, whereas the actual wage rate uh, in a in a non peak agricultural season then hovers around 100 to 150 rupees and it can rise to meet the minimum wage criteria around the absolute peak agricultural season the peak of harvesting or peak of sowing season where there is a genuine labor shortage and just because of demand and supply dynamics uh, you know the, the wage rate increases to an extent that it just meets the minimum wage, wage criteria uh, of about 250 or 300 rupees. But most of the year, the agricultural operation goes on much below the minimum wage uh, declared by the government. Yeah, the wages are, as per the um, law, Minimum Wage Act 1948, and there are so many revisions. Labor Department, every three years, they also revise the wages um, for the skilled and unskilled worker. Most of the agriculture workers are sugar cane farm, farm workers considered as unskilled workers. So as per their law, they should have a minimum three to 400 per day for the farming or harvesting. But in some area, it is varied. Near to the Delhi, the rates, wages are the very good. They are paying the minimum wage because their labor have also exposed with the Delhi, exposed with the Western UP and Haryana. Haryana wages are also very high there. But some part of the UP, the wages are very low, lower than the minimum wage. For example, in some district near to the Himalaya, in, near to the Nepal border, 
the wages are very low if the nepali farmers are also coming nepali workers coming they also getting the lower than the minimum wage there because they don't have a very um, bargaining capacity and also the farmers also provide the living place also the food and um, some eatables and food grains everything there so um, in my opinion 50% um, sugar cane farm workers are not getting the minimum wage as per the law and in also and what? there are some in uh, not equal wages women have a separate wage and male have a separate wage for the women women in but I mean lakhimpur khiri district the women have a maximum 150 per day male have 300 so this is not equal wages not equal remuneration even the child labor also they are um, involving the child labor child labor also getting only 50 to 30 to 50 rupees per day as per the they are a family size if you see the five members one family average average five member to six member here the six members uh, family size and the you know, six member family size and for the good living condition education health care and also nutritious food uh, it should be minimum 15000 per person per person and what and the, and the minimum wage now is 3 3 to 400 Party. Yeah. The minimum wages set by state governments are often significantly lower than what is required to have a decent standard of life. There are also significant difficulties owing to the nature of the agricultural market of detecting and penalizing violations. What is more, there are also significant risks of forced or bonded labor and child labor. So the engagement of labor in the agricultural system is uh, uh, is based on a daily wage system and daily wage which is linked to uh, you know productivity uh, uh, for the for the farmer uh, and uh, well essentially there are two types of uh, laborers uh, again if you are thinking about agricultural laborers in india you know broadly i can think of uh, categorizing them into two parts uh, one are people who are available to work in your field uh, on higher basis who can who come in as daily wage laborers so there is a particular amount that you negotiate with them and and you know they work through the day and often uh, you know they work fairly long hours in in the agricultural sector often the working hours tend to be you know as high as 10 12 hours kind of shift in the peak agricultural season and there is a daily wage that you you pay to the laborer again the daily wage is pegged against a minimum Uh, amount of productive uh, output uh, wh- when it is harvesting you know the certain amount of harvest or when it is uh, sowing or weeding you know there is a uh, uh, you know there is an output expected and defined already and then they have to work to finish that am- that amount of output for you as a farmer and then you pay the the agreed amount to them now there is another category of agricultural laborers uh, which unfortunately uh, even in the 21st century we see the practice of this indentured or bonded laborer practice in agriculture very significantly and these are essentially extremely poor or vulnerable people often from dalit and adivasi communities who for uh, either a health emergency or a social function happen to have taken a loan or a debt from a uh, resourceful person within the community or or from outside the community often they happen to be a landed you know large scale farmer and uh, at a very very high uh, interest rate often these are also illiterate people they are not able to calculate what amount of interest they are supposed to pay and 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 and, and uh, you know structure that pay pay out of that uh, of that debt and they get stuck in a debt trap and often the interest amount is many times more than the principal amount that they originally borrowed and the only way because they don't have any other sources of income the only way they then repay the debt is by offering their bodies as as labor force to these uh, landed households so and these are called bonded laborers so essentially they have bonded their themselves to work and repay the labor and often uh, we have seen examples where these you know fairly small amount of debt of something like 5 or 10000 rupees uh, takes an entire generation of bonded labor work uh, 
uh, to repay or often even after you know the, the original person who had taken this loan uh, you know passes on the responsibility of repayment to then their children and their you know uh, grandkids and over generations this family keeps repaying that original debt by you know uh, by debt bondage in that sense and and in in the in the bonded labor category then there is simply no concept of wage because you are essentially working and earning a wage which is going towards repayment of of a loan that you had originally taken so there is really no concept of a minimum a minimum wage payment or uh, or anything uh, often for their survival purpose maybe the land owner would give them some amount of food grain so that their food uh, necessity of the household is kind of met but other than that they don't they don't really get any income out of out of working in this bonded labor situation yeah the farmers who have purchasing the land who are sugar, owning the sugarcane farmers farm they are providing the uh, space for their living so they they can just because their standards are very low they don't need the good house and things in the farm houses they have some uh, place to live just like a one hall and some huts and they created there they used to live there and the farmers also providing there some rice and some pulses to eat and then so they stay for three three months four months there temporarily and after the work they have to go to their own village and some are the agriculture workers are the from the native villages so they have their own home but they are also belong to the very poor community they are also living in very small houses somewhere in huts some also in very um, one room one room house where five to ten people are also used to live there so these are their uh, living condition there their expenditure are very low they just eating because i also um, visited their family and also sometime wash their food habit and thing the food are very um, not very much healthy not nutritious they just uh, eating the some pulse and rice or some roti chapati as so, so hardly the vegetables also they are using it and some also the jaggery because they are a sugar production uh, production area so there are jaggery also produced in that area particularly the liquid jaggery and some farmers also provide them the jaggery for the breakfast to just the the liquid jaggery they they poured in the water and uh, uh, made it juice yeah it depend upon the uh, from where they are coming from the jharkhand and from the chatisgarh they are coming with the family the children and wives and male female both are coming and working in the farm but from the eastern uttar pradesh only the male are coming and working there so it depend upon that from the nepal also the whole family used to come to work there and for the children there are no facility for the education the children are also playing in the field and just uh, some children are also working also i we just uh, also observed that some area for the particularly the sewing time where the they have to also bend several time to sew the uh, uh, sugar cane piece there so they have to bend several time to sew it so the children are very um, good for the sewing because they have a small size they are also very flexible so the farmers are very much uh, happy to involve the children as a um, agriculture worker there so they give the whole the um, sewing things as a contract for example per acre they may pay 5000 rupees for the sewing so whole family involved male female and children for the sewing higher up the value chain more employment relationships are formal and there is more compliance with the legal minimum wage but as we have seen that is not sufficient for employees to have a decent life for themselves and their families uh, but we even the um, uh, some of the suppliers discussion they said um, uh, even nowadays living wage uh, discussion is coming all over uh, world uh, but in india we are uh, our uh, country yeah, as per law and also uh, in the uh, factory they providing minimum wage that is also not providing properly that is different but Uh, 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 suppliers discussion what they said uh, we like to give a um, uh, living wage but the uh, price rate is very low the price rate is very low we cannot able to uh, give for give give a um, uh, mini uh, living wage that's why we are giving um, uh, minimum wage if the uh, uh, buyers or brands they will purchase uh, more price uh, is even um, uh, their price rate will be increase 
definitely we can able to uh, give a living wage so living wage even though they are discussing living wage means uh, per uh, month uh, minimum uh, 18000 sir 18000 the fixing uh, based on their food health uh, health their grocery uh, their uh, children education uh, all the all those things sir but in comparatively it is very less in the tamil nadu sir tamil nadu tamil nadu this uh, minimum wage minimum wage therefore uh, they are advocating international level even asian floor wage alliance uh, groups they are advocating uh, uh, above uh, 18000 18000 should be provided to the workers that is uh, they they calculating something calculating based on the expenses sir uh, food health education uh, room rent and uh, some things that they were calculating based on that they said uh, living wage be needed sir but this uh, minimum wage always this leads poverty that's why they said we need a living wage sir any discussion of wages however must also assess the amount of work for which that particular wage is given this is normally calculated in terms of the duration of time for which any particular work is done so questions such as whether there is a credible record of the duration of time for which a particular worker has worked or whether an employee pays for the amount of time in excess of the standard duration for which a particular worker has worked are also important questions when we think about wages i think there've been um i mean a couple of studies uh i've come across um there was an ilo literature review um that i think said that 51 um percent of of um of workers in india or around 50% of workers in india are actually getting in in the garment sector or the textile sector are actually getting uh, below um uh, the minimum wage um i think there've been other studies if you look at certain areas like for example in in ncr uh, you might find that um the figure is slightly higher um an issue here is at the level of the more formal factories um uh the calculations uh obviously in terms of you know uh wages also have to t- take account overtime and often that is not necessarily properly recorded um we also find at the uh more informal reaches of the supply chain where workers are not um uh necessarily in possession of contracts uh they're working on piece rates typically uh so the actual uh notion of how many hours they're doing is um you know very hard to calculate and any kind of um you know accurate measure of wage should actually also be taking account sort of hours work because it's obviously wage for a certain you know portion of hours it becomes most challenging when we when we uh talk about say um you know home workers for whom there is not necessarily any witness of time um uh you know that they've actually taken and and so certain methods have been devised to measure that um but certainly in terms of wages i think the the more you go into the sort of hidden peripheries of the, of the supply chain especially especially female uh home workers um uh the the more you'll find uh minimum wage violations and not and not just failures to meet i'm talking about absolutely chronic kind of failures to actually uh supply the the minimum wage i mean we we found in this study that we had done uh last year that i'd referred to um home workers were getting somewhere in between it was we were it was a rough estimate but we were finding it was kind of in between often 40 to 80 rupees a day the average was around 70 i think home net south asia did a study working in the shadows recently a few years ago which said the average was about 70 um for 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 home workers that was looking at delhi nepal um uh, delhi i think also in uh, tirupur i think as well uh, right to wages uh, even uh, uh, spinning uh, spinning and garment these two industries are uh, in te- uh, textile supply chain is a major industry sir which we are also working uh, uh, they said um, uh, sp- spinning uh, spinning industry uh, see 8 uh, hours uh, 433 rupees uh, 0.83 paise 
uh, that should be provided by uh, as per minimum wage act every year they are revising revising uh, that they, that should be go uh, that should be give uh, by this uh, fact sheet uh, but actually practically what they how much they providing even uh, 12 hours uh, 330 350 rupees they providing the shift means uh, 12 hours most of the factory they have uh, 12 hours 12 hours means totally they have two shift only most of the factory they have three shift three shift uh, that is eight hour shift but uh, some of the factories even uh, some more factories they have uh, 12 hours shift therefore they they even 12 hours they providing uh, wages to workers uh, 330 maximum based on the factory size they providing 300 uh, 300 rupees 330 350 rupees they providing sir uh, even the 12 hours we calculate 12 hours we will calculate uh, at least they provide uh, 866 rupees at least they have to provide provide but uh, maximum they provide uh, 350 rupees so 12 hours um, uh, most of the factory they have the 12 hours uh, some of the factory only uh, 8 hours 8 hours the 12 hours they should work they should work uh, you see um, uh, uh, my interaction with the workers we are working with the directly workers they said um, uh, they when they are at uh, some of the factory they have eight hours but when they coming as worker shortage worker shortage some of went for holidays some went for their own village uh, madurai and other uh, somewhere uh, therefore worker shortage is there morning they are sending to sending pick up the vehicle from the village uh, they after shift eight hours uh, they are not sending to vehicle uh, dropping their village because they have to work again four hours uh, they have to work again four hours it means 12 hours if they like to work again four hours after four hours they are going to drop their village if they not work if they not interest they can go by their own expenses uh, by the government bus in some other rural area you see half night they are doing half night shift for example uh, evening uh, five o'clock evening uh, yes five o'clock they will start eight hours no, it, so therefore they it, it will over nearby 12, 12 o'clock in shift, the completing shift. They, after to night 12 o'clock, how can they go by government bus to their home? Uh, obviously, the suppliers, the factory industry bus only, they have to drop. They said, if you, if you, if you, if you want to, if you want to go back to your home, you can go. They are not, uh, they said, we are not forcing. Uh, if you like to work, we can drop in midnight. So, so therefore the, they, there is no bus uh, they if they want to uh, they have to stay in the factory only in the hostels uh, then uh, after uh, four hours it is over time they can pick up and drop their village so this kind of uh, situation is happening uh, for the workers the more informal an employment relationship is the less we actually know about how much time an employee works for in the agricultural production of cotton and sugarcane neither are there any records for how long an employee works in a day and there is almost never any question of overtime payment. Apart from the wage, the agricultural work itself by the very nature of it is, uh, is a very difficult and strenuous work. Often as I said, uh, you know, you have to start very very early in the morning, often before sunrise, uh, work till about 11 or 12 in the noon uh, you know, and then when the sun becomes particularly harsh you often take a two or three hour break uh, and which is also the time for you to kind of cook and have your uh, lunch in, uh, around the field area itself and then again start at say about three in the afternoon and go on till about 6, 6.30. Uh, you know, so if, if you calculate the entire working hours it often tends to be 10 to 12 hour kind of shift and even in the evening often in an agricultural setting you have to do a lot of uh, 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 housekeeping work for the agriculture in terms of you know getting back all the equipments getting a, getting back all the supplies putting them safe uh, in in the godowns uh, you know uh, uh, cleaning up uh, the space and then things like that so often the the working hours in in in, in, in an agricultural uh, sector uh, can can go as high as you know 12 hours kind of shift with absolutely no recognition of any overtime kind of a payment 
Yeah, the, as per the law, there is only eight hours of the working hours. But in the practice, in the agriculture sector, the working hours are very high, and I think more than eight hours. It is average ten hours, ten hours per day. And this is throughout the year, not just. It's not a seasonal. No, this is seasonal. Issue. Because sometimes, sometimes there is no work. They are the agriculture workers are have no work any work, so they are also not uh, engaged by the farmers there. That time they also doing some um, without wage also they working. For example, they are living in the farm. There is no work, so they may do some one hour work without any payment. Only for the food they work there. So these are the also happening. We already saw that they work very long days in the agricultural production of cotton and sugar. What are the other conditions that affect the health and jeopardize the safety of agricultural workers? But apart from the fact that there is very long working hours at abysmally low wages, we also see the situation where uh, you have uh, uh, actual physical risk of exposure to uh, to the conditions, uh, to various adverse uh, weather conditions, be it rain, be it sunlight. You know, and often uh, in, in crops like, uh, you know, during the irrigation period and into the crops, you're working really in, in extremely muddy condition, in, in knee deep water and things like that, uh, without any kind of protective equipment. Obviously, the, the concept of, you know, having globes or wearing gun boots or any of this is fairly alien. Uh, in the Indian agricultural context, most of the workers are not provided any of this, uh, you know, protection equipments. Now, uh, also, uh, you know, after the advent of the green agriculture, uh, the, the green revolution in agriculture, which in a way intensified uh, the agricultural activities in India, but also uh, intensity, uh, intensity of uh, use of agrochemicals became very high, be it the chemical fertilizers or be it uh, spraying of pesticides. Uh, uh, both of these, which are kind of uh, uh, which are uh, uh, which are fairly dangerous chemicals. That, you know, uh, essentially you're dealing with poison. Uh, the agricultural workforce, which is doing the pesticide spraying or applying uh, fertilizer uh, on uh, in the fields, are exposed to this at uh, uh, without any kind of protection mechanism. There is no concept of you know wearing masks or uh, you know wearing gloves while applying this uh, this, uh, these uh, agrochemicals on the field and often you are exposed when you are spraying uh, pesticide in a windy condition, you are exposing your own body for the chemi these chemical droplets to enter your own system uh, and then this goes on for over a period of six to eight hours in a day, which is, uh, which is why we see uh, this, uh, uh, the high uh, 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 there's a fairly high incidences of uh, of health situations because of overexposure to chemical uh, in the agricultural com uh, communities, especially those agricultural communities where uh, agrochemical usage is very high. Uh, you know, the example of uh, uh, this locations in Punjab uh, from where the strain kind of uh, goes to Rajasthan to a particular uh, location where there is a famous cancer hospital and then you know that particular train is known as the cancer train primarily the 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 source of 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 cancer in that community is because of overexposure to uh, chemical pesticide spraying or chemical agrochemical uh, exposure uh, without any protective equipment so uh, so this is a very very significant risk that for our agricultural workforce which is induced because of our adoption of green revolution technologies without uh, any kind of protective mechanism uh, being in place uh, and practically feasible to kind of enforce and uh, you know in in the farming sector uh, often uh, none of the farmers really invest in any of these uh, personal protection equipments uh, and neither is the labor force kind of uh, used to you you know wearing or, or using them uh, to an extent that even in the commercial plantation sector, so when I, when we are talking about individual farmers, one can still understand that okay they don't have the resources to invest into this kind of uh, PPE equipment. But even in more commercial plantations, such as commercial tea tea plantation in in Assam, where the, the usage of agrochemicals is very very high. In fact, you know the pesticide residue uh, 
in, in processed tea leaves was one of the issues that was highlighted by the Center for Environment Economics uh, recently. So, you know, very high degree of uh, chemical pesticide usage in, uh, in, in plantations, uh, in, in tea plantations. Often when, uh, while uh, the, the compliance requirement of Plantation Labor Act or various other kind of uh, certification system that certifies, uh, you know, sustainability standards around tea, mandates use of personal protection equipments being provided to the workforce uh, most often you would find the workers are either not being provided or are not using the ppe equipments on a regular basis uh, and and you know only when there is a particular audit team is expected to visit the the plantation on that particular day you will find everyone kind of wearing their gun boots and their gloves but on a, on a regular basis, you'll never see workers uh, uh, really wearing any, any kind of protection equipment. So uh, if you look at the working conditions in that sense, it is a combination of extremely poor wages, very long and uncomfortable working hours starting from you know before sunlight and going till late in the evening. Uh, extremely harsh working condition in terms of working through uh, rainfall, through you know, harsh... Uh, sunlight and things like that and not using any kind of not having access to or use of any kind of personal protection equipment even when you're dealing with dangerous agrochemicals that are being sprayed in the air so com combination of all of this makes uh, the life of an agricultural uh, workforce or agricultural laborer particularly harsh now coupled with this kind of harsh working condition is also the aspect of uh, you know equipments uh, which are being used in the agricultural uh, 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 in the agricultural setting which can be a, a source of uh, accidents as you uh, as we mentioned where you know uh, especially around the harvesting season in, in a crop like sugarcane you have often uh, uh, you know uh, found a large number of uh, you know uh, accidents related to uh, you know use of uh, uh, use of the cutting, especially the cutting equipments in the in the in the, in the agricultural fields, uh, or the harvesters, and often, as I said, you know there are children uh, of this migrant uh, agricultural workforce who are also involved in these agricultural uh, uh, you know the harvesting activities or uh, things like that, and and using dangerous equipments, uh, they are vulnerable to uh, to uh, such injuries. Now. The, the tragedy of the agricultural workforce is that it is entirely an informal space. There is no formal uh, you know, employer-employee relationship in, uh, uh, in their engagement, in their employment as, as an agricultural uh, laborer. So that means that in the case of any ill health or any kind of accident, uh, there is simply no responsibility on the part of the engaging farmer to take care of uh, of their uh, cost of treatment or providing any kind of accident benefits to their families or or any, or any of that uh, the uh, the related systems. In fact, uh, we don't have any kind of a planned social security system for the agricultural workforce either from the government or any of the, the private sector side, and uh, uh, often you know you know apart from accidents being caused by the use of equipments like cutting equipments or harvesters or, 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 or you know accidents related to uh, or, or exposure to agrochemicals there are also kind of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, incidences of snake bites uh, because often the agricultural activity is happening in hot and humid conditions muddy waters you know uh, both the rice fields the sugarcane fields you know these are places where uh, uh, the, the tea plantations that uh, you know I spoke about these are all places which are also cohabitated by snakes often poisonous snakes like cobra uh, in a rural setting and, and, and quite a uh, almost in every agricultural harvesting season there are hundreds of cases of snake bites now in any of these uh, situation be it a snake bite be it an exposure to agrochemical related illness or be it an accident because of uh, the harvester or the agricultural equipment usage it really then depends on the 
uh, the goodwill or the charity that the land owning farmer or the farmer community can provide to the laborer the laborer simply don't have any kind of access to a social security system or or in a position to demand certain degree of compensation or coverage of treatment costs as a right you know it then depends on the goodwill of of their employer or uh, or the charity orientation so in in that sense you know somebody takes them to a government hospital uh, you know loading them loading the permanent tractor then they they are they just have to uh, you know uh, be dependent on the gratitude or you know the goodwill that the farmer shows them there is absolutely no access to a systemic way in which they can access uh, any kind of uh, uh, protection uh, measure be it for treatment be it for social security be, be it for their compensation for their family or or any of that and not only for the cost incurred in treatment and compensation but also because of an uh, injury or illness if you are then unable to work for the next 10 15 days or a month or or for a longer period uh, it is essentially your own loss right there is no one to compensate you for the loss of wage and hence uh, uh, and that's one of the m most significant reason why uh, you know people fall into poverty trap in the rural areas is because somebody got injured during uh, an agricultural operation or or any such activity and then lost income over a period of 2 or 3 months and then they had to take a loan uh, from the same farmer who was supposed to, who was actually their employer who was originally supposed to pick up the cost of all this uh, cost and also provide compensation to the family now actually extends a loan at a very high interest rate and then in order to repay that that loan this agricultural labor family then turns into a bonded labor because they have no other resource to be able to repay that loan uh, uh, you know uh, other than selling their own labor yeah in the farm they are because they are using the um, eggs for the cutting the um, sugar cane and uh, there is no protection of their no gloves no because the hand, their legs and hands are very vulnerable for the accident so sometimes hands cut also is very common, sometimes legs cut also very common and in some area they are also adjacent to the national parks of the tiger reserve. So sometimes tiger and panther and also the leopard attacks and also some wild boar attack to the agriculture workers. This is very common in some districts. So there is no protection measures also in the sugarcane farm. The sugarcane leaves are also very sometimes dangerous. If they touch that uh, open skin, they may cut, a small cut may be very visible. A small cut in the hands, a small cut in the legs, back, even the face very visible. There is no first, first aid facility there. There is no protection issue there. And if they accidentally got some accident, the, as per the law, there may be some um, supports, maybe they should get it, but this is also not functional there. Yeah, the, whenever they are using the in farm the insecticide and pesticide and fertilizer, the security measures are very low because they are not uh, facing the uh, immediate pro any problem. Because if they are using the poisonous thing, it may be the uh, happened or some created the result after the three months, four months, one year, two year, three years, and the um, workers are the illiterate. They are not aware of that. They depend. They are not able to read the content of the bottles what is this what is the side effect of this and uh, they are not aware of that and even the farmers are not telling that so sometimes they are very exposed body the open so this is also the very much um, problematic issue and uh, also regarding the some accident also happened and if we see that when they are loading the trucks as per the ILO convention the bags or the, uh, the bundles weight should not be increased. It should be a minimum, maximum to 50 kg. As per the physiology, as per the human body structure, the skeleton structure, 50 kg is the ideal for the to carry it. But when we observe that somewhere also may they carry the 60 kg, um, 80 kg, 70 kg load. 
they just uh, carrying on their heads and just loading and sometimes unloading unloading and loading there is no security measures with the carrying the um, weight so this is also the biggest big issue workers engaged in the agricultural production of cotton and sugarcane have to deal with harsh weather conditions and handle potentially hazardous materials our experts have told us that the use of protective equipment is only exceptional they also have to face the risk of accidental injury these problems are compounded by the absence of any systematic compensation scheme for workplace injury or any social security scheme that protects against incapacity to work or for medical treatment there are also serious risks to health and safety higher up the value chain but in the process unit there are some protection measures they are using the height but only for the permanent employee the contract worker don't have some protection so very very good but for the permanent worker when i visited the some type sugar mills i observed the all the engineers managers and also professional workers the workers who have vocational trained they have a helmet they are using the helmet they are using the gloves they have some also some protection measure some uniform also but in the when they are the loading and deloading there is no facility there so they are just open open neck open hand open head they are working there so there is no protection if some death happen there are some protection measure some sugar mill also paying some money to the permanent employees but for the um, contract worker or the seasonal worker there is no um, even though they are not giving the minimum wages so the farm okay. level there is no protection is so farm level contract worker there is no protection is so only protection is so in process unit for the permanent workers um, uh, uh, it is a yarn cotton is a micro dust always is there in the spinning and uh, garment sector and the micro dust we cannot see it is always fly the micro dust fly always here and there is there uh, but even though now modern mecha- machines are there observing that uh, micro dust but that is not enough that is not enough uh, therefore it will health wise uh, their uh, their lungs will affect uh, not now it will in future and also they in uh, spinning mill they have to stand uh, 12 hours still hours there is no sitting arrangement because the spinning mill spinning uh, is a uh, machine is a big length machine uh, they have to run here and there because it is a, from cotton uh, it is a twisting that's why spinning the twisting and make it a yarn there in between uh, there is a breaks yarn breaks is there wherever the machine the big uh, length of machine uh, they have to run here and there and uh, reconnection with uh, from uh, cotton to yarn Uh, there is a twisting uh, like this a big uh, twisting is there uh, they, therefore they have to walk and run here only 12 hours there is after 40 years uh, maybe the varicose uh, kind of health problem is, uh, is is there in some of the simplex is one of the department in the uh, spinning mill the simplex always uh, every 4 hours we should clean the machine with the oil chemical oil chemical oil so therefore automatically they are not using properly gloves and things uh, so therefore uh, definitely skin allergies skin, uh, skin problem uh, it will come definitely it will come uh, also sir th- there is a guarding machine uh, guarding machine in the spinning industry one of the department called guarding guarding always the big machine uh, we should um, uh, uh, we should uh, full up uh, fill up this cotton with our uh, hands our hand only that is with the big machine is kind of uh, running our hand will uh, some of the uh, uh, girls and workers young workers they went out this hands so that's kind of uh, issues also accidents also happening in guarding department uh, therefore it, it, it is hazardous work definitely health will affect uh, but uh, still there is no health uh, wise research big research in the uh, uh, garment and spinning we have read also we done one study uh 500 workers in um, anemic study uh, anemic study that is near by 60% worker uh, due to their working condition the heat and the long time work they are not taking properly food 
food also uh, there is no proper sleeping uh, therefore their blood also they there is no as per uh, count in their body it, it, it is affect uh, their working condition therefore they are becoming anemic okay. uh, yeah, even though the spinning mill um, there is a big sound always particularly spinning department even though spinning mill there is several department is there one is the first department called blow room then uh, guarding department then that is a uh, simplex department uh, then uh, preparatory department then it goes to spinning after spinning uh, after spinning uh, there is a um, uh, the binding department binding depa- department is there particularly the spinning department uh, there is a huge sound is there always we uh, something decibel na no? some sound we, we as a human we can only hear some of the decibel sound but it, it is abnormal sound therefore we should keep uh, uh, something here safety uh, whenever there is a brands visiting government uh, people visiting during that time only they providing uh, for ear uh, safety but uh, most of the time it is not friendly using also first of all therefore workers also not to like to put but even the spinning we cannot able to speak we have to uh, uh, do something action to understanding even near uh, nearby worker uh, because even though we make a sound nobody ca- cannot hear nobody cannot hear so we will go on nearby we will do some action they can understand otherwise we come out, we, we we should come out from that uh, uh, particular uh, particular department we can discuss therefore the hear uh, uh, affect also is there inside the spinning mills we will now turn our attention to the aspect of social security we learned in the previous module of this course that the term social security refers to any scheme that protects people against poverty and deprivation or the consequences of poverty such as inadequate health care we have also learned that nearly all social security protections that are available under indian law such as the provident fund scheme and the employee state insurance scheme are only available to workers in the organized sector but as we noted in the last video nearly all the workers in india's agricultural sector are informal and when they are migrants they face additional difficulties in accessing the few benefits that are available uh, for the agriculture labor as per the law there is no provision okay, there is no any law also but as per different other law for example it is a social security act 2008 the government of india um, enacted in the law uh, as per this act there are some provision to provide some support to the um, farm workers there different type of the farm worker different type of the unorganized or informal workers but this is not implemented by the state this is one issue very big issue the other thing also there there are some welfare departments in the different state for example here in up there is a family benefit scheme when the prime bread earner died or accident uh, due to work the government are paying the 30000 rupees from the welfare department so they can have it but for that also they need the permanent residence number the address proof identity proof and this is also a challenge for a migrant worker this is not possible so if the migrant worker from the for example the eastern up or bihar or jharkhand person died in merit or western uttar pradesh they have to apply so sometime authority ask them to go to their native place and they can apply there so they can do it as per the law this is possible to apply in their native places and they can get some Thirty thousand rupees. I put that family benefit scheme. It called the family benefit schemes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, so as I said, I think there is uh, in the Indian agricultural workforce context, there is simply no access to any kind of social security or or any kind of pension fund mechanism or any kind of provident fund uh, kind of support on a on a uh, either provided by the state or provided through uh, the scheme. But what the government has really done. is to come out with again as i said i think it, it you know uh, something that should be the right of a workforce that that is engaging productively and contributing to our economy you know we have schemes uh, of charity like an old age pension so you know you you work your entire life as an agricultural laborer the working condition is so harsh that by the time you attain a age of 45 or 50 you are really your body cannot take it anymore you are 
in a, in a way uh, compulsorily uh, uh, retired from your role and then the only uh, source that you can depend for any kind of income is uh, is an old age pension scheme which is like you know something like 350 or 500 rupees uh, per month and which is given more like a charitable uh, exercise rather than this being uh, something that you have earned based on the contribution that you have made through your lifetime and hence uh, there is no dignity uh, in uh, 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 in the way the the uh, these kind of social protection system or the social security measures are being administered uh, you know it, it is not given to someone as uh, in recognition of their contribution to to uh, through through their working life to the economy it is given as a handout and, and in order to access a handout for example if you want to take a old you know just to make a old age pension card or you know bpl card in a rural setting you have to first go and bribe the uh, panchayat secretary and, and whoever is the is the authority you know at a block or panchayat level you know be grateful for them to you know to having provided you uh, this card which you know gives you a very measly sum at the end of the month the healthcare system that has been set up under the employee state insurance system is not well resourced the scarcity of insured healthcare is evident even higher up the value chain yes i if uh, any health issue as a worker uh, has some um, uh, esi facility in the particular uh, industry uh, if they deducting their salary uh, for esi uh, esi uh, worker can go to esi hospital uh, even some of the area for example rural areas esi dispensary only they have uh, but they, they they don't have esi hospital esi hospital uh, therefore the worker can go there uh, uh, they uh, go to have a health checkup or health problem they can go to uh, in esi uh, uh, hospital or uh, esi dispensary but in practically is it esi uh, hospital uh, there is a poor condition poor condition uh, they don't have uh, facilities to scanning and other facilities just is a general checkup uh, we can go for just a fever or headache some cough we can go but uh, beyond that uh, anything some problem uh, esi hospital they don't have that facilities uh, do uh, uh, do some health checkup for, for that so that is the problem also the esi um, they are uh, they are deducting uh, 1. 1. 1.7 uh, something uh, because they deducted uh, uh, last two years uh, uh, esi 1.47 for seven uh, rupee they are deducting from their salary uh, that uh, that is there for them but it is not properly using for the worker worker but even though this uh, related to pf because it is one of the entitlement for the worker but in one of the things pf also very important things pf my own experience we seen um, even they uh, changed their age when their recruitment happening uh, recruitment happening where they are very young age like a 15 years 16 years 17 years below 18 years what they are doing um, the aadhar card they are changing their age yeah their age for example um, uh, 17 years uh, girl they are changing their age is a 19 years or 18 years completed their age uh, so therefore in aadhar card uh, they are changing their age uh, they are enrolling their pf pf but what is the problem will happen really when they are going for claiming their PF, that time they are asking for original Aadhaar card, their school certificate, something, even bank account. So it is very difficult to access their their own PF. We we faced several problems, challenges for where we are working in the rural area. There are several uh, young workers, particularly women workers came, they want to claim their uh, their PF but still not at the climb because their age age is uh, age their, their uh, enrollment age is different their own uh, certificate age is different so it is also problem is there to summarize unorganized workers have few social security benefits in india unfortunately 
most workers in agriculture are unorganized and that leaves them with very little protection from poverty and unemployment. This is also true higher up the value chain where a large number of workers are employed on non-standard terms. Even when they are permanent employees, they are quite likely to be unaware of their entitlements. We have also learnt about how the healthcare system under the Employee State Insurance Program is not well resourced. We have taken a look at some aspects of work such as wages and other conditions of work, health and safety and social security in the supply chains for sugar and for textiles in India. Our experts who have studied these aspects very closely have told us why work in these supply chains does not amount to decent work. Now, some of these issues affect special categories of workers such as migrant workers differently and often disproportionately. Another category of workers that we need to consider separately are women workers. Uh, there are uh, several problems, pr uh, problems faced by the women workers. So first pro problem is the equal wages. They are not getting the equal wages. This is a very major problem. The second major problem is the also some, some female workers are also the victim of the um, sexual abuse or the domestic violence also sometimes happen because in Western UP the liquors are very easily available. So the male member also come with the country made liquor and also start some domestic violence in the home. See, other problem is also very important. And the um, third problem, major problem is that the, um, uh, if there are uh, um, so many workers are available, then the farmers only involve the male workers. So there are discrimination they are facing in that area. And for the loading and unloading, the, even for the truck drivers and transporters, transporters and farmers are not uh, uh, involved with the uh, women worker. They, can, they have some pre notion that they are weak, they are not uh, do the loading. For example, this is also problematic. The 70 kg of the bundle of the sugar cane and they also have to um, load down trucks and tractors. So this is my problem. So there are also discrimination there. And in the sugar mill also the gates, the waiting time is very high. Sometimes the, uh, they have to wait for the 6 hours, 8 hours, sometimes 2 days, 1 day. So the women farmers and women workers are not uh, very much comfortable to go there and also um, work at the, that center. And toilets also the very big big issue. They, they don't have any facility of the toilets. And they are very vulnerable for the um, urinary, UTI, urinary tract infections. This is not disclosed by them. And this is very common. Because some of the our female workers also discuss with them. They are very vulnerable for that. Because this is the sometime in the monsoon season they have to start the one same cloth from morning to night. Sometime also the rainy and they uh, wait and they also created and this humid situation they face some skin disease also. This is a women specific problem they are facing. But if women's, yes, a women they're facing several problems in textile industry, even see uh, even the harassment level, harassment level, they have to work uh, maximum beyond eight hours, beyond eight hours. They have to work 12 hours or some other factory they have 10 hours, 10, uh, 10 hours. So it, it, it is very difficult. They have to stand uh, even 12 hours in the spinning department. So it, it, is, a, it is a problem for health wise as a woman. Even uh, uh, supervisors, supervisors also you know, kind of uh, verbal abuse, even sexual abuse also there. In the verbal abuse, they will have our own uh, experience, even study, we done a study. Even we had a regular uh, focus group discussion with, uh, uh, with the uh, women worker. They said, um, they, they said, um, uh, who are all uh, uh, supporting to supervisors, women worker will supporting, is accepting their uh, demands. Uh, th those workers, there is no problem, but who are not accepting, they are giving extra hours, extra hours, they will not uh, drop to their home, a regular worker. 60 cases, we went the fact finding, we done the legal complaints, uh, uh, legal intervention with the consent department. Uh, this is all they said, what they said, uh, suicide cases uh, by suppliers, uh, uh, supply side, their statement, what's it? Oh, they have love affair with their boyfriend in their own village. Therefore, they're here, uh, they've done uh, suicide. So, 
for uh, you imagine 106 workers uh, only they, uh, they 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 died or they suicide by their uh, uh, love of fire no we cannot say maybe very few cases is there but all the cases how can they how can they do uh, as a suicide so therefore the suicide means it's a something force force is there something force is is not only just a forced labor forced things some work and beyond there's sexual exploitation or sexual force also there that is our uh, our uh, argument uh, uh, our stand uh, so that is kind of several harassments are happening on women because of the in indian context always we cannot ignore yes um, domination and caste based discrimination this both is in the name of culturally they tie up uh, tie up there so therefore even it is not uh, 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 it is not only outside the uh, outside the factory in the society level issue that that is the kind of issue in the even textile supply chain is also there this closer examination of the issues faced specifically by women workers in the supply chains for sugar and garments brings us to the end of this module we first learnt about the overall structures of these supply chains and the nature of employment relationships in different parts of these supply chains. Next, we looked at some detailed aspects of the work in these supply chains, specifically wages and working hours, health and safety, social security, and the issues faced specifically by women workers. This has given us a good idea of how to gauge whether some work measures up to decent work standards. Now, once workers have determined that their work does not measure up to these standards of decent work, what can they do? What remedies can they seek? That is the subject of the next module of our course. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.